watching a video by Christy Sobolewski um, on YouTube and she likes to create art folders basically out of uh, manila folders and all she does is collage on them and then embellish them and they look really cool I thought I might try that and you know feel a bit of inspiration to do something new however I just noticed that um, I bought the full scap manila folders um, instead of the A4 and full scab is usually a bit longer this way um, that doesn't really fit in my drawers and I prefer just to stick with A4 size so I can't use that bugger so I'll have to go to the shop again and get the size that I wanted but instead I thought I might just do some mail art with the same ideas instead so basically using an A4 envelope um, actually I'll show you the difference between the A4 size and the full scab see how much taller that is so yeah i'm gonna do it on this instead now i apologize for all the shadows around i can't really fix them unfortunately so sorry about that guys um so basically yes what she does and i will put a link to her video in the description below so you can check it out as well um, all she does is just collage paper all over her surface which is something I do a lot in my journal pages and something I recommend doing if you're just a bit stuck for inspiration um, just collage bits of paper all over and at least it's something to start with and it's the first layer I suppose so I've got my big pot of matte gel medium here um, you know it's I'm going through it like there's no tomorrow like about a third left of this big pot that's a almost a liter um of gel medium so you know not too shy about it but you do need a lot of it when you um doing a lot of collage and then um my uh paper stash is a little bit embarrassing i'll try to drag it out over here it's so big i don't even know if it's gonna fit in here i don't think it does so um yeah here you go this is a basket, <laughs> but A4 size, and I have heaps of stuff in there. Painted deli paper, um, wrapping paper, uh, bits from, um, for instance, these are, this is in the packaging of my, um, what do you call them, uh, texture plates that you use for gel printing by Carabelle Studio. I just uh, throw away the packaging and just keep the gel plate, oh, sorry, the texture plates aside. But, you know, this is fun to use in a collage, so don't throw that out and reuse it. What else do I have in there? I've got some Tim Holtz collage paper, some Balmalin collage paper, lots of napkins, some Jane Davenport, some sheet music, um, and all sorts of things. And also I have a few copies of my secret stash book. I'm not trying to plug this in really, but <laughs> this is, if you don't know about it, I'll just quickly tell you about it this is what it looks like this is my book so it's basically if you don't have any collage paper or you just want so, 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 i can't speak now or if you just want some inspiration or something to paint on that's already prepared then i created a book that is full of background and these are all taken from uh, my own art and basically you can just paint straight over that or write your thoughts or just tear pieces of it um, to collage in your own artwork so the paper is quite thin on purpose so you can tear it up and collage it easily and it's also matte so you can write and paint over no problem um, so something that if you didn't know about may be useful so that's all it is basically it's called secret stash by Mimi Bondi you can find it on my website and also on Amazon um, but yes yeah, so there's just a page first page of introduction here and after that it just starts all just background, backgrounds for you to play with and create cool stuff with. So basically, um, I've got a few copies of the book. This is, um, these were just basically samples, uh, prototypes, if you like. So I've got a few of those in my stash and you can see the cover has changed. This was, um, you know, the first one I was going to do and then I changed it to this instead. Uh, but I do have a few copies in here and I will use some of the paper from in there. You can see I've already ripped through 
um, quite a few pages so yeah something to that's also why this pile is quite tall I'm trying to find excuses aren't I <laughs> but anyway so all, all I'm going to do is just put some music on cut some pieces of paper and just um, collage them on here and then I'll get back to you when that is done Something else I wanted to mention to you is the best tool to do collage. Now, um, I used to use a paintbrush and that's a real pain to clean when you've got gel medium on it or gesso or any kind of medium. Then I used a palette knife and that worked really well for a while until I discovered this tool. And this is a silicone brush by Finaber. It's made by Prima Marketing. Let's put it closer to you. So basically what it is, is this part here, which looks like bristles, is just silicon. So it's a piece of plastic, I'll show you the one that I use, um, that is a little bit flexible and it is super convenient to use because it's got a handle like a paintbrush. You use it like a paintbrush, but it's got a bit of flexibility, just like a paintbrush, and also um, quite a large surface. It also comes in a two inch Sorry, this is the two inch size. It also comes in a one inch size. Um, I've got both and actually use both for different projects depending on the size of it. With something like this, I'll use the larger one. But basically, as you know, silicone is super easy to clean, so I don't have to worry about damaging it. Bit of a, you know, a wipe with a baby wipe or a bit of water and it just comes right off. So it's been a lifesaver and a really good invention. So simple, but so smart at the same time. So that's the Fina Bear. Art Basics um, silicone brush in two sizes. Um, so basically all I do is just dip it right into my gel medium and then just plonk it on here. It's super easy to use and also very quick. And then I'll start ripping off uh, bits of paper from in here and just, um, you know, just go for it. All right, back to the music. papers are actually from a freebie downloadable um, or printable downloadable printable pages that you can find on my website in the freebie section um, so I hand painted them with watercolors and then uploaded them to um, to my website for you to download and print and use in your art so make sure to go and check that out mimibondi.com and go to the freebies section
Okay, I'm done with my whole envelope here. So as you can see, not everything is covered. There's, you know, a couple of tiny bit of the yellow, but I don't really care because it looks like it's part of it anyway. It could just well be a piece of paper. Um, so I've basically, as I go along, if you haven't done much collage before, it may look like um, I'm putting a lot of gel medium on there, but I'm actually just spraying it around and also scooping it up with this tool um, when I'm going over the paper. So it actually, there's not that much waste at all. It just looks like there is. Um, but basically, so if you haven't done much collage before, just make sure you put the gel medium below uh, before you put the piece of paper and also on top of the paper to kind of um, adhere it into the glue and also seal it at the same time so you can write and paint over without any issues later on. So the advantage of using this tool as well is because it's got a bit of a flexibility as I mentioned before but also a little bit of rigidity. I'm just going to use a baby wipe to clean it now. Um, the rigidity of it um, allows you to kind of push the gel medium and the paper and make everything glue together so it's really really handy and I used to get a lot of um, folds and creases and air bubbles before using other tools and I don't mind if it happens it still happens a little bit of course I don't mind if I've got a few but I don't want too much either but using uh, something with a bit of rigidity will help you avoid um, that problem so that's all there is to it. It's good to go again. I'll clean my surface as well before the glue dries completely, although I'm using a silicone mat underneath as well, so it'll be fine. I'm going to let this dry, maybe speed it up with a, a heat gun, and then I will turn it around and cut off all the excess so it looks nice and pretty. Okay, it's all nice and pretty much dry, I'll say. So I'll flip it over and then I'll cut off um, the excess you could obviously avoid that by being really neat and only going cutting pieces of paper really straight glue them right along the edges of your um, surface but really I mean this is just so much easier and it will look neater anyway so if you're worried about uh, paper sort of peeling off the edges um, then you could add a washi tape border just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Um, it also would reinforce um, the edges. So if you wanted, you could either post this to a friend or a customer and have some goodies in there. Or um, you could use it to store some of your collage paper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> or some artwork in progress or some pretty sheets of paper maybe your UPA paper or things like that um, you know there's many things you could do so now it looks really neat and I think a washi tape border might be a good idea um, I'll have to think about it in the meantime so we've got this then what now well we could just paint over it you could absolutely leave it like this it's already pretty nice I think I don't know what your thoughts are it's a little bit dark in the studio today um, but so you could leave it like this you could draw something um, I don't know let's how about we just use the masking technique which is basically masking out some shapes uh, with paint over this busy background um, for instance, Christy in her video drew a face, I think, and she sort of embellished things around that. But um, I love circles. I know you do too. Um, so I think I might just draw some circles around um, the surface here and then paint around them. So block out some of the paper that we've put down. I, you know, not everyone is going to like that. It's up to you. Uh, but I think I'll do that. So let's find some circles to draw around. Uh, well, looking back at the big pot of gel medium, let's make it double use and draw around that. Uh, if I can find, just have to find something to draw with that's not going to rip through the paper. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, well, all I could find is this. <laughs> Actually, a lot of my supplies are upstairs. I haven't brought everything back down. So, um, And also, I'm thinking I don't have that much around me that is larger than this circle. So I think I'm just going to freehand it. Let's just do that. So 
circles or sort of circular shapes would be good. Um, I'm going to zoom in for you a little bit so you don't see my sleeves hanging down. There you go. Um, let's go with just I'm thinking like a rainbow kind of thing. So I don't want to, you know, obliterate everything on here. But I want to make it a little bit more interesting at the same time. So I'm just going to grow, grow, <laughs> draw some lines. Oops, I've already messed up a bit. That's okay. It's meant to be hand drawn like that. And then we'll do some slightly different shape. It's still circular like this. I'm trying to keep it fairly even, but let's be honest, it's not going to happen. So just some simple shapes. And I'm just using a, a thin black marker here so I can sort of see what I'm doing, but not make it too obvious either. Let's do a circle. I'll start with a small one. Circle-ish. And then sort of draw around. I'm going to make it a bit more organic, this one. Certainly not perfect, but hey. Um, that would make more sense to go this way. And then what else could we do? Maybe another one around this corner. We can always add to it a bit more if we want as we go along. I think so I've got something down here, here, not too much going on just yet. I'm going to do another couple of shapes here um, and then maybe just a smaller one in this area here all right so where are we at um, now I'm going to do a bit of finger painting so I'm going to grab some colors now the hard part is to decide which color to go for here uh the background is really colorful there's a you know a myriad of colors going on here so you could go with anything you like really just pick one and go with it um i'm thinking sorry i'm gonna make a bit of the table shake a bit i'm thinking just i'm gonna start with some light blue first and i'm just going to add some on my finger you know, that's my favorite technique. And then I'm going to paint directly into some of those these shapes, not all of them. I do want to um, some to still be visible, of course, but I'm going to sort of go over my lines and just make it a little bit messy like that. I'm going to start with the blue and then I'll do some other colors as we go along. That might turn into a rainbow as well. <laughs> so this is sort of masking some of the areas underneath and I'm going to put some paint on the back of this I'm sure that's fine let's just let's not get too worried about things like that let's do this area and I'm going to put some music on it for you again and then just um, keep going with finger painting like this now in some areas just to make it more interesting I will do some paint a little bit opaque and some area I'll make the layer of paint a little bit thinner so you can you know you don't want to cover all that beautiful collage paper underneath you want to still see through a little bit it just makes it a bit more interesting I think so I'm going to do a bit of blue on all my little shapes and then I'll pick another color and then Keep going, see how see where we end up.
Okay, so I've done uh, three colors here. And while that's drying a little bit, um, I'll show you which colors they were. So the Liquitex Basics, which is my favorite brand of paint. Um, they, I'm not sponsored, by the way. I'm just uh, promoting products uh, when I love them and I use them myself. Um, so I'm using the Light Blue Permanent, um, the Medium Magenta, and Turquoise Blue. So the reason why I love this paint so much in mixed media is because they do allow you to do um, transparent layers or opaque layers and they're not too liquid, they're not too um, stiff, they're a soft body paint. So they're easy you know, to apply on your finger and that's not going to leak out of the tube um, or you can just paint with a paintbrush obviously. Um, but so I would love the consistency. I love the fact that I can do transparent layers if I want to and the colors are really beautiful I just really love the range. So yeah, and they're really affordable. So <laughs> what more can you ask for? Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all the reasons I think um, So I'm going to speed this up a little bit uh, and then while I'm drying this I'm going to have a little think of you know what to do next Okay, we all dry now. So as I was drying, I was thinking, well, I was looking at what's on going on here and I was looking at this big, um, this thick black, black bleh, bleh. <laughs> I can't talk, thick black lines in some of these areas here, bit of black here. Um, and I thought, why not do black lines around those um, circular shapes as, as well. So I'm going to use uh, FW acrylic ink. This is Payne's Grey. I could use black as well, but you know, this I saw this one first, so I'm just going to put this in a little bit, like in a little container. And then I also could not find a thin brush, so I'm going to go with something a bit thicker than I was hoping for but you know you just make do with what you have right there so I'm just gonna dip it in here and just go around my lines make them nice and chunky this will make the edges a little bit neater at the same time because finger painting is not always precise but that's also the beauty of it <laughs> so acrylic inks if you have never tried them are amazing i just love them so easy to work with uh, being an ink it is completely fluid obviously as you can see i didn't need to dilute it with anything super easy to use and very opaque okay that's one side nice chunky lines even though this is paints gray, it actually looks pretty much black anyway, so that works out well. Don't worry if your lines are a little bit out of whack, you know. You basically painting here over, uh, you know, layers of paper, different thicknesses of paper, so it's not going to... It's not completely flat anyway. What do you expect? It can't be perfect. And if you wanted to do this perfectly, you'd have to go really slow and really think about it. It would just be uh, painful. So <laughs> let's not do that, huh? Oh, it's meant to be fun, relaxing, liberating. So let's just keep that flowing feeling as much as we can. If some of your lines are a little bit too close together when you you know for instance here and here it's pretty close then just paint over one of your colors so on the inside yeah so it leaves a bit more room to do a few thick black lines if you don't have any acrylic ink then you could uh, absolutely do this with a thick marker, a Sharpie marker or a Posca pen. Get a similar result, but it it just looks better with a paintbrush because you get that. Um, what would you say? 
that hand painted feeling I suppose. <laughs> this one, all these lines are crossing, that's okay. You can see I'm not being super careful. I'm just having some fun with this. A little bit of this product goes a long way. The bottles have a um, an eyedropper, as you saw, so pretty easy to suck this back and put it back into the bowl after, or just pour it back in. Really, let's do that now, so you can just go and then put it back in there, or just pour it back in. That's a little bit faster, and we don't want to waste anything. Okay, so once again, I'm going to dry this off. Some of it's already dry anyway, so that won't take long at all. And at the same time, think of what to do next. So when you do big, thick lines like this, obviously it makes everything a bit more chunky looking, if that makes sense. It's not very refined or detailed, and that's a fun look, definitely. Um, but one thing I like to do if I want to sort of get away from that a little bit is to do little dots on the thick black lines. And obviously there's nothing better to contrast with a dark gray or a black than white, of course. Um, so you could also do this with a silver pen or a gold pen would definitely make it, uh, give it a completely different feel. Um, I'm going to go with white because something that I do a lot, it's a bit of a trademark, um, those little white dots. So I'm just going to space out and you know just enjoy a little bit of uh, doodling here and speed this up for you because you'll fall asleep for sure if i don't <laughs> let's get to it Okay, so as you can see, adding some simple white dots has completely transformed um, this little envelope, um, you know, from one style to a completely different style. Um, one isn't better than the other, but I certainly prefer this one, <laughs> so I'm quite happy with how it looks right now. So I'm going to just dry off the white ink. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, this is a white Sharpie marker, and that's a medium point. This is one of my essentials in my toolkit always have this one the thick one i'm oh, sorry the thin point the fine point i think it's been possibly discontinued uh, but i have both sizes in both white and black use them all the time so i'm going to dry this off and i think all i'm going to do is add a border um, I was thinking of doing washi tape beforehand, but I think I'm going to continue with the black just to get everything unified and I'm going to just hand paint a border, white border all the way around. So it'll be a little bit chunky-ish, but um, it'll be organic at the same time. 
and it should tie everything together. Um, and nothing is really complete with a little bit of shine or iridescent for me. So I'm going to add a little bit of that. I'm going to use my favorite um, iridescence. And this is the Pebeo Studio Acrylics, the Dynaflow, which have a two-tone um, to them. So this is the green yellow. So it's got both. It's mostly green with a yellow, um, I don't know, reflection to it. It's... It probably won't pick up on the camera, but it's just beautiful. So I'm just going to add a little bit, just a little bit of shine, just to make things pop a little bit more. That's going to really transform this envelope as well. I'm not trying to fill up the whole section, just to add a little bit here and there. And I've got some other colors as well, which I put in um, little pots for when I go traveling. So I've got a bit of this one, which is the red blue. And let's put a bit in the center here. So I'm putting it um, sort of tone on tone, so it's not as obvious here. And then there's an orange one in here. That's a little bit dry. Let's see if I've got, mm, I've got some of the, um, oh, these ones are pretty much empty. I'm trying to find one of my little pops, pots. Still has some paint in there, but I haven't got what I want here. So I'll put a bit more of the green, just a little bit on here so all I'm doing is just rubbing super gently over the surface and where there's a bit of texture from the paper it'll just sort of pick that up again not trying to fill up the whole area I just want to add, add some highlights just make it very subtle and certainly not very precise <laughs> but that's okay so put a little bit more on this um, turquoise just to break up um, the flatness, I guess, if that's a word. Make it less flat. That's okay if you go over the little white dots. You're not going to worry about that. It's all good. More along here. Again, these iridescent paints are in my essential to toolkit. Like I do not go anywhere without them. It's about, um, I think, something like eight colors in the range, including regular, you know, silver and gold, and also rich gold. But in terms of the two-tone, I think there's maybe about, yeah, maybe six, I think. So if you haven't tried those, look them up. They're awesome. Now just, just turn that down a bit here. And I think I am going to call this one done. 
let me show you up close so you can pick up some of that iridescent hopefully hopefully that shows a little bit here with the light or maybe not you'll just have to take my word for it anyway it's super pretty and it really just you know give gives life to this um piece which was a little bit flat i think before oh here you go you can see it much better now okay guys i hope you've enjoyed this and if you haven't seen a lot of my videos or don't know much about me yet then pop into my web over to my website mimibondi.com have a look around i've got lots of free tutorials and uh, lots of photos of my paintings for inspiration and make sure to subscribe to the newsletter so you don't miss out on any posts um, and anything fun that's coming out like a new class a new workshop um, a sale on my book uh, books or or workshops sometimes and you never know it happens um so yeah make sure to come over and make sure to leave a comment to say hi i'd love to hear back from you hope you've enjoyed this bye for now guys